why is there so little love for our native violets? These small, colorful wildflowers help announce that spring has sprung as they bloom across the woodlands, in fields and meadows, and lawns of eastern North America. But during that same time, I so often hear people refer to them as weeds and a nuisance, which I think is a bit harsh for such a good looking flower. These cheery little flowers have a lot going for them and to help spread some love their way, here are six reasons why you should love our native violets. The wild violets are vital host plants for the fruit early butterflies. There are a lot of species of fruit earlies in North America and a huge percentage of them use violet as their only host plant. I don't think many people realize how important violets are as host plants since you rarely see fruit early caterpillars feeding on them. The caterpillars tend to hide amongst the ground debris during the day and feed on the violets foliage at night. So even though we may rarely see them feeding, violets are super important to those caterpillars and the future of fruit early butterflies. A more obvious reason to love the native violets is their beautiful early spring bloom that can last into early summer. In most areas, the bloom will occur from March through May, but this can vary with location and species. The leaves also emerge early and can add a nice touch of green to the still somewhat dreary late winter, early spring landscape. Those early blooms bring us to the third reason to love native violets. They support native bees. One very specialized bee in particular, the violet mining bee, Andrina violi, which specializes on the pollen of native violets to feed its young. This small mining bee can be seen deep in violet flowers collecting pollen, which it will then take back to its burrow nest to be stored so its young can feed on it when they hatch. Other native bees, such as bumblebees, will also visit the blooms of native violets. I mentioned many bee species in my videos, and if you would like to learn more about the bees that happen to be in your yard, I recommend the book Bees, an Identification and Native Plant Forage Guide by Heather Holm. This book covers native bees and introduced species in detail, including size, when they are active, life cycle, where they nest, and how they collect pollen, and even has a section covering common native forage plants for each bee. There are sections devoted to many species of native trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants that bees use. It even covers two of the most common species of violets. At the time of recording, this book cost around $22, which I think is a great value. I will put a link to where you can purchase this book in the description. If you love learning about underappreciated native plants, make like a violet miner and dig into that like button. Bonus fact! The flowers and young leaves of wild violets are edible. The flowers can be eaten raw in salads or used to flavor syrups and vinegar. The leaves can be eaten raw in salads or cooked in soups or as greens. Be aware, there are some plants you don't want to eat that have leaves very similar to violets. So don't go foraging violets unless you are 100% sure what you are picking. Many of the native violets are quite hardy and adaptable and can be found growing in a variety of conditions. Some species can thrive in full sun to nearly full shade in a wide variety of soils and moisture conditions. Because of this, the native violets as a group have a huge range in eastern North America with few places having no native violets. The native violets are a diverse group and there are over 30 species of violet native to eastern North America. If you would like to see a video going deeper into some of these species, let me know down in the comments. With that diversity comes a wide assortment of colors. Wild violet blooms can range from purple, to blue, to white, to yellow, and even combinations. The native violets have a lot to love when it comes to color. Violets can be a bit rambunctious when it comes to spreading, which is why some people consider them weeds. But this makes them great for a specific flower gardening task. They make great ground cover. I get asked all the time about native ground covers. And honestly, if you want a tough, easy, can be planted just about anywhere native ground cover, it is hard to beat some of the native violet species. The native violets have a lot to love about them, and so does another group of plants many seem to shy away from, the goldenrods. While there are many goldenrods you do not want in your pollinator garden, there are plenty that will do great when planted in a smaller space. And you can learn all about them in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.